So now starting with chapter number 13 and this is returns. Covering section number 37 to 48 and rule number 59 to 84. What is the meaning of returns? During your articleship, you regularly dealt with the term return. What is the meaning of return? When you file income tax return, what are you filing? Data of an individual. Okay. Income details. Self-assessment. Right. So what you said, it is to a certain extent, it is absolutely correct. This is a statement of desired information return is statement of desired information right so now as far as income tax act is concerned what is the desired information what you have received what you have spent what is your profit and out of that what is the amount of tax in GST, every registered person is liable to pay tax. Who are the persons registered? Except to where a person is opting for composition scheme. If the annual turnover of the supplies exceed 20 lakhs or 10 lakhs, right? Once registered, he becomes liable to pay tax also. But before paying tax, he is eligible for input tax credit, right? So first thing will be, to what extent he is eligible to avail the credit? right then that credit is utilized for discharging the output liability what is the total output or other output supplies on the basis of that there is computation and output supply of one person is the input supply for another person right so if there is a supplier and there is a recipient. This recipient may be the end consumer or it may be a business consumer, B2B or B2C. Right? So when this supplier is there, he himself is having his input supplies and output supplies. Supplier himself is having input supplies and output supplies these output supplies are supplied here right now when the output supply details are given this person is giving the intimation to the government that i have made supply number one supply number two supply number three supply number four to the recipient n number of recipients can be there now the government is asking the recipient to give information about his input supplies, right? Now this supplier has said that I have made supply number 1, 2, 3, 4 to this recipient. For the recipient those become input supplies. Right. Now this person says that I have got not only 1, 2, 3, 4, I have got 1, I have got 2, 3, 4, I have got 5th also from the same person. I 
I got fifth also. Right? This person has not declared. This person says I have received fifth also. Now imagine what happens. Something more. On these four output supplies, this person has paid taxes of rupees say 1000. Right? This person will get the credit of that 1000 rupees. Because 1, 2, 3, 4 are matching. Right? What about this fifth? On this fifth, there is another tax of 250 rupees. The recipient is cl claiming credit of 1250. This person has paid 1000 rupees. How much credit should be given to this person? Right? Now what the government does, when this recipient has declared that he has received service number 1, 2, 3, 4 plus 5 also from the supplier, government tells this person, you take the credit of this also. You take credit of 250 also. And then the government brings it into the knowledge of this supplier that this recipient is saying that he has received a supply number 5 also from you. This person is saying that he has received supply number 5 also from you. The two situations are there. This person supplier accept that yes, there is a mistake, I am sorry. Yeah. Right? And then he adds supply number 5 also. Fifth is added. And for that fifth supply, another 250 he pays. When it is done, this recipient has give, furnished the details of without input supplies and in that there is a mismatch. This mismatch of supply number 5 brought to the notice of the supplier. Right? What the government has done? As far as the recipient is concerned, it is informed to him that you take the credit first. We will see later. Since you are claiming you have received, take the credit. Then it is brought to the notice of the supplier. Supplier may accept, may not accept. If he accepts, he rectifies. Pay the 250 plus interest also. Now this data is validated, batching is done, everything is okay. Now what happens if this person says, sorry, it is not correct, I have not met the supplies. I have not met the supplies. Right? This person is saying, I have received the supply. Government has given him credit also. And that is, the credit is given for the money which government has not received. Now what should be done? Purely logical that instead of telling you that this credit he will have to make the reversal. Here it is given in other words that this will be added in the output liability of the person. Who is that person? The recipient. So adding means it is a indirectly it is a reversal of the credit which is not confirmed by his supplier. Got it? If you understand this concept, it is a very simple concept and this we are going to discuss in section 37 and 38. In section 37, we have 
information about outward supplies in section 38 we have information about inward supplies right then we'll talk about periodic returns in section 39 everybody is required to file periodic returns so there are monthly returns there are quarterly returns and the other information these are three main sections here then mismatching of the credit etc that is in section 42 and 43 okay so now what is given in the chapter as the learning outcomes right so if you have understood this much right then prima facie this is good enough for you to understand what we are going to talk about in the chapter in any case we have to go into the details but this is the crux okay now the chapter tells you what you should be knowing after you have gone through the chapter comprehend the provisions relating to various types of statements and returns to be filed by a registered taxpayer consequences for defaulting in filing of the return provisions relating to gst practitioner and apply the same in the problem solving under section 48 there are provisions for certifying certain persons as gst practitioners who will facilitate the suppliers to comply with the provisions prime of AC, these are complicated things and maybe within one year's time these things will become routine yes. when people have done it repeatedly yes. right so there is a concept of people being certified as GSC practitioners then we have appreciated and analyzed the process flow involved in the filing of statements of outward and inward supplies and the consolidated monthly return so this is already a brief supply of or other information about output supplies information about input supplies then the returns are there in section 39 right so that is consolidated return then we have appreciated and analyzed the matching concept this also i've explained to you what is the matching concept got it simple right so this is the entire summary or rather summary of the entire chapter and if you understand this then you will understand everything whatever we are going to discuss in the chapter so moving to the next part next page some introduction is given keep it aside on page number three very first line says under the GST laws the correct and timely filing of return is of utmost important because of two reasons reasons later but filing of correct information is very very crucial and important because rectification will not be allowed after a certain period of time In the provisions we are going to discuss that rectifications are possible up to filing of the return for the month of September or the succeeding financial year or filing of annual return whichever comes earlier. So beyond that rectifications are also not allowed. So some mistake committed in this financial year if a person finds that in the December 18 and he wants to rectify that that cannot be done. 